Computers have been able to connect with each other over a network since the early 60s. A program on one machine would open a connection over the network to another program running on a different computer, and these two would send packets of data to each other. At first, these programs were specialized and had to be designed carefully to work with each other. Just because program A and program B can talk to each other doesn't mean that program C or D can talk to either of them. As networked computing became more popular over the decades, developers created data transfer protocols and improved network standards, and a pattern of hosted services and clients emerged as the standard approach to networked programming. Hosted services, or servers, are programs that run continuously, waiting for client programs to connect and make requests. Some early examples of this pattern include file servers, which allowed users to store and access files on a remote computer from the comfort of their terminal, and email servers, which permitted communication between users on different systems. These servers each had their own communication protocols and required specialized client programs to access. Each service stood alone, not able to interact with one another without dedicated solutions. The real revolution in web development started with the invention of HTTP and the World Wide Web by Sir Tim Berners-Lee in 1989. He developed the first web browser and HTTP server to demonstrate how the server-client pattern could be used to share arbitrary data and documents. These new tools were single-purpose programs for sharing and displaying HTML web pages, but the potential for websites to be web apps tantalized the industry. Why download a dedicated client to interact with a file server when a browser could show the entire file listing without specialized software? What if you could edit, send, and receive emails directly on the web? Obviously, web apps have achieved that and much, much more. Right now, you're using a web app that can play video, host interactive quizzes, charge your credit card, and track your learning progress. There are thousands of web apps out there that are capable of all kinds and combinations of complex tasks, and at the center of it all is the web server. There are still specialized servers that host videos, store data, and perform other specific tasks, but it's the web server that has emerged as the central hub to connect and control the others when building an application. Java emerged in the mid-late 90s, right as the web revolution was kicking into high gear. Shortly after its release, an official web servlet specification was developed, and a few years later, the concept of an application container was laid out in the release of Java Enterprise Edition, a set of official recommendations and specifications for web development in Java. The application container was a server that could host many different applications at once and connect them all to the web through a standard interface, the servlet. Suddenly, in Java land, creating and connecting a cluster of specialized apps was trivial. As Java developers continued developing web apps, they frequently discovered common problems and solutions. The rise of the web made online collaboration with other developers easy, and the open source software scene filled with groups of veteran developers sharing the tools and utilities they had built to make life easier for themselves. One of those tools was Spring Framework, which was first designed in the early 2000s to eliminate boilerplate code for enterprise Java developers. It was wildly successful, growing over the years to support everything from cloud services to transaction management to batch processing of bulk data. Now, it's an industry-tested standard, building on Java's successful enterprise architecture to power millions of projects and applications. <laughs>